Most people in America are familiar with their rights begin and end with regard to their life and their spirituality and their faith. My rights begin and end with me. Your rights begin and end with you. Who you choose to love is your choice. What you choose to believe in is your choice. Your preference for spirituality may change from the time that you have your origin with your birth family or your bloodline until the time that you're an adult. Many people walk away from the faith during their teenage years because they're too selfish to conceptualize a lord above their life beyond their mother and father who might be monsters in their own faith. But as a person moves into adulthood, they start to decide that they have a life philosophy or life faith or a spirituality that speaks to their soul. And what we all know from studying the good works of the world is that only one deity, a Lord God, a Heavenly Father and Divine Mother, exists for the world. That was established by the Tower of Babel, that all of the nation was split with God's anger and we got all the different races, tribes, and languages and cultures. We also got different versions of a current Heavenly Lord. When I say these things, it's logical, it's very conceptual, and it's very visual. It makes sense to most of us. But in truth, a religion that might have fit us in college may not fit us as we move forward in marriage. In my life, I lived overseas and I had a spouse, and that spouse was not of Christian origin. She was Buddhist in nature, and we practiced three versions of religion in our bicultural bilingual family. That is my right to do. It makes me a pagan today. I prefer the pagan definition by the International Pagan Federation out of the United Kingdom. Please go visit their website, Google it, and find out what they believe in in general practice. Every single pagan, Wiccan, Druid, and whatnot has a different version of their religion of faith, most of which is a tree-hugging concept of love, life, and liberty for all. It's a pretty simple way, the three L's, to explain it all, but every human being is unique and everyone has a different practice. In my practice of faith, in my seeking my own spirituality, in the healing of the losses of my life, I visited a spirituality shop where I met a marvelous instructor who was incredibly edutaining, meaning she was highly educational in the type of content she provided us, and she was very entertaining in the good time we had with her. And as a part of that, I learned about Taroki. Now, Taroki as a traditional visual image does not speak to my soul, but my own oracle cards do. I have approximately 16 sets of them, providing that late siblings did not steal them and ruin them, which would be an abomination to the Lord, because in the good works of the world, we are very much aware that God makes all things. We don't exactly know the origin of Taroki, at least none of us have seen that very publicly sent, but what we do know is it sort of came out of Italy, and it was basically a trump suit or a playing card suit that had additional images. I think in our current 52 set pickup of trump or c playing cards, we still have jokers, but we don't have the queen and kings lot, and we don't have the life cycles of our lives. I am presuming with the help of the assistance of archangels that what was happening at that time in government is that they were using visual images, small picture cards, to talk in private sessions about things going on in politics and in social networks. So they needed these cards. But over the course of time, the gypsies came in and made them more of a faith-based spirituality situation, and they made it a bit about pro prophecy and learning things going on for them. The beauty of the cards is not only in the artwork, but it's the spirituality you feel when the Lord above communicates to you by looking at the visual aspects of the cards. I personally prefer the three card draw. I think it's easiest to master, whereas I know people who are marvelous and can do multiple decks at a time with an incredible reading for you. The difference between what I do in my faith and what they do in their faith is very different. They interpret, whereas I read letter for letter, and that is my right. In life, the Lord above only can give us prophetic gifts, and the gifts of the Spirit, which are per predominantly now called gifts of the soul, are still given to people who submit fully to the Lord. 
at this time I can tell you what a minority report man is. It's not exactly like the movie, but there are definitely gifted people in this world who have been given the gift from the Lord. Like the folks you see on television sometimes, like the Teresa Caputos and whatnot, and the Tyler, whatever his last name is, little faggot and very out in Holiday World. But that's not the point. Hollywood, rather. The point is that they are still of the Lord's house, and they still have a marvelous gift. And the ability for th them to help people see the future for their lives, but also regard the past. And most importantly, about a minister, as I would like to lay call her, of Teresa Caputo, who's doing some marvelous things in the world, is she really helps people to grieve and to move past those hardships of loss. She is truly a therapist for that. And we all need people like that. The words oracle in the Bible are often abused and completely poorly defined in most dictionaries. They usually refer to, or refer to oracles as women, but as we've learned across the ancient world and through current times, God has the right to pick and choose any person he chooses to give gifts of the Lord. There's no satanic force that can do that, even though God made Satan to challenge you to move closer to God. You don't have the right to abuse a person based on their faith and love of the Lord. In America, taroki cards are sold at metaphysical shops or spirituality socks, shops, or um, I'm not sure there's another name for those shops other than an eclectic or New Age bookstore. But the New Age is sort of a poor term. And while we have marvelous authors like Dr. Doran Virtue and others, they really help people who are struggling with the strain, the, the mainline churching concepts to find a faith and to deal with loss. And many of the people in a very heavily female-oriented class that I participated in as a man were dealing with loss. And most churches don't handle that well. So we have to allow those shops to exist so that people can reach out to people who are true ministers, like my teacher was a trained, fully certified minister, and she was more Jesus-like than most. In life, I learned quite a lot from her about all different types of practices that are sort of old ways of the Lord, but she did not teach me my current proficiency in pendulum. That came from someone else. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and a taroki card can give you some peace of mind in the morning if you added a part of your prayer time. The other beauty of it is that there's so many different decks out there with absolutely stunning artwork and messages that they can help lift you up. Even famous authors like Michael Beckwith and the Dalai Lama have cards that can be used in similar fashion to help you give yourself messages to uplift your soul and bring you closer to the Lord every day.